sign of an undeclared emergency, particularly before a general election. Now, Indi Bloc leaders have been to the Election Commission's door to raise this matter. The Amadi Party is writing furiously to the EC as well. Opposition leaders, particularly other sitting chief ministers, have outraged. Interestingly though, in none of these high-profile arrests, especially recently, is there any sense of public outrage? That's just the times we live in or is there a message there? There are no spontaneous outbursts from the public or rallying against any government or agency action. This does not augur well for the opposition. Does the opposition have any public sympathy against these arrests? And how may these arrests affect the upcoming elections? We'll take that question to our guests in just a bit. Let me first break down what happened in court. Arvind Kejriwal was presented in the Rouse Avenue Court, Avenue court and here is what transpired. The judgment or the order has been reserved and we are waiting to hear from the court. Now, the ED's case, Additional Solicitor General S.V. Raju appeared for them and tagged Arvind Kejriwal as the kingpin of the excise policy scam. Abhishek Manu Singhvi, who was representing Arvind Kejriwal, argued that there is a need to show the necessity to arrest, which the ED had not. Now, ED has also alleged that Kejriwal had disobeyed or multiple summons already. He did not give correct facts when they went to interrogate him. Kejriwal's defence was that there was nothing to show that he cannot give required information without arrest, even now. Now, ASG Raju argued that those involved in the functioning of the party, Ahmadmi party in this case, were deemed to be guilty because their case is that the AAP received kickbacks uh, because of the policy tweaks. To which Kejriwal's counsel said that reason to believe and material in, in the possession of an accused must have a causal link. The threshold is very high at the level of the word guilty. The agency argued that there was corroboration by witness statements and call records to point to Arvind Kejriwal's involvement. They have said that they are holding him guilty not just as an individual but also vicariously because he is in charge of the affairs of the party. Now, Abhishek Manu Singhvi argued that 50% of the people haven't named him, 82% have not uh, you know, mentioned any dealings with him. So, on what basis is Arvind Kejriwal's connection being made? The other big question now is, what happens next? Can Arvind Kejriwal continue as the Chief Minister of Delhi, even as we await judgment on his custody? ED, remember, has demanded 10 days of it. Now, there are multiple facets to the question of whether Arvind Kejriwal can continue or not. Constitutionally, an arrest does not bar him from holding a constitutional post. The law actually only bars you from holding a post once you are convicted. Many ministers in the past have uh, been jailed and have been under trials and have continued to, part, to be part of a cabinet without a portfolio. There's only one case of a former central minister who worked from inside jail, but generally they continue without a portfolio. Satendra Jain held his ministerial berth for months, for example, after arrest. In Arvind Kejriwal's case, it's interesting to note he does not hold any portfolio. But does that mean he can continue to be Chief Minister in name? Maybe technically yes, but a Chief Minister who is away from his office is not doing any good to his constituents. A Chief Minister's absence also means the government is rudderless. That argument can be made to allege constitutional breakdown or a crisis. Given that Delhi is not a full state, the LG can step in and recommend dismissal of the government itself and seek President's rule. He can do so under Article 239AB, which gives him the power to invoke the breakdown of constitutional mechanism. The Aam Aadmi Party says that Arvind Kejriwal will continue to be the Chief Minister and so far there is no hunt for a successor. But can Kejriwal dispense his duties as Chief Minister from behind bars? Here is more. Now, as per Jail Manual Rule 1349, what an under trial is allowed to do while in prison is defined. So this in, does not include receiving files or signing them. It's not mentioned in the jail manual. That's not a facility available to anyone serving time pending trial. While there is no bar on meetings with lawyers, an under trial cannot chair meetings with anyone outside of his or her defense team. 
no orders can be issued either. So how will a chief minister run a government even without a portfolio from jail is the big question. No wonder then that from the likes of JJ Lalita to Lalu Yadav to more recently Heman Saran all have resigned when they were arrested or about to be arrested. Now, opposition leaders have united in their defence of Arvind Kejriwal. Many have called this an assault on democracy. I just want to outline what some of the big leaders are saying. Mamta Banerjee, for example, West Bengal Chief Minister has said that it is outrageous that opposition chief ministers are being targeted and that this is a blatant assault on Indian democracy. Not surprising, most of these statements have been made in the past as well. MK Stalin, Tamil Nadu Chief Minister, DMK Chief has said Passes BJP government is sinking to despicable depths. There is a relentless persecution which is smacking of witch hunt at this stage. What is Pinaray Vijayan, Kerala chief minister and left tall leader is saying? Callous plot to silence opposition voices. This calls for resistance of abuse of power. Remember, Arvind Kejriwal led Amadi Party has announced nationwide protests. Uh, it looks like the Indie bloc could also come together. Speaking of that block, what is Congress's Rahul Gandhi saying? He's saying a scared dictator is creating a dead democracy. Arrest of elected chief ministers is a common thing. I'm guessing he means it's a common thing now because it is actually not that common in Indian politics. With that, the big question we're asking today is simply this. As far as all of these big political arrests are concerned, particularly in the case of Licker Gate, does the opposition genuinely have public sympathy and is their narrative truly resonating with the public? इनको भी जेल में जाना पड़ा सुप्रीम कोर्ट से लेके अन्य कोर्ट ने उनको राहत नहीं दी है क्या अरविंद केजरीवाल कानून से ऊपर है इशू ऑफ केजरीवाल इट्स सेल्फ इज शोइंग क्लियर पॉलिटिकल वेंडेटा अगेंस्ट हिम ऑपोजिशन पार्टीज एंड लेयर लीडर्स उन्हें किसी चीज के लिए गुनहगार पाया नहीं गया है जेल में बंद रखना यह भी उनके साथ एक सोची समझी साजिश है Harish Khurana of the BJP is joining us. So is Siddharth Sharma of the Ahmadmi Party. Arshpreet Singh Kadial from the Congress. AP Singh is former CBI director for the agency point of view is joining us. I do thank you all for your time. We are awaiting once again the order from the trial court or uh, Rouse Avenue court on Arvind Kejriwal's custody battle. And I mentioned how fiercely it was fought in court earlier. But I want to discuss the political import of what's it, what is transpiring. Siddharth, the principal question I'm asking today, this evening is this. You've seen multiple arrests of the Ahmadmi Party leaders. You've seen the chief minister who hasn't resigned also being under custody now, or uh, at least, you know, being arrested as it stands. But there doesn't seem to be, unlike what the Ahmadmi Party would claim, great public sympathy for you. Your workers are protesting on ground and, you know, fair enough. But it's not as if the public believes Arvind Kejriwal has been wronged here. Well, two or three things here. One is that if the what the public believes, a few weeks ago, Amadmi Party cadres did a survey across 25 lakh homes in Delhi and asked the people that if Arvind Kejriwal is going to be arrested, what should he do? And the people of Delhi, 95 percent, overwhelmingly said that they have voted for Arvind Kejriwal to serve them, hmm. and they would want to serve and they would want him to serve them 
uh, from wherever he wants. Now, for the second point that you said, that that answers the public sympathy question. Uh, before this program, in your opening statements, you said something about a law and order uh, uh, constitutional crisis and the president's rule being uh, recommended. The mm -hmm. question is, who approves the president's rule now, the lame duck Modi government? Because Modi government is right now a lame duck government. Everything is under the election commission. So who recommends the president's rule and who approves it? The is it LG the, would, uh, the LG would uh, uh, make a recommendation with it, for it and the president will have to approve it. The president does not approve of anything unless the cabinet or the ministry says so. And the ministry is a lame duck Modi government right Your now. Your point That's being? My point being that uh, this is redundant. The second redundancy that I'll, I'll tell you. You said something about the jail manual permitting something and permitting uh, not huh. permitting something. Huh. My, an my answer to that is that India is being governed by not by some jail manual but the constitution of India. Show me one shred of evidence in the constitution of India where it says that the chief minister of a state has to serve from X, Y or Z place. It's point not about two. whether he has to serve from X, Y, Z place. It's whether can he actually discharge his duties from inside a jail cell. But Sada, that's the question I'll come to in just a bit. Uh, my main question to you was this, the opposition narrative is that opposition leaders are being wronged. They're being, you know, uh, affixed into these cases and there's absolutely nothing against them and all of this is happening in, uh, just ahead of elections. And in this case, you could argue this has happened barely four weeks before the first phase of polling. But that's not the sentiment on ground, I'm sorry to say. Is that some realization? Are opposition parties noting that? Is that a worry for you? Uh, again, coming back to it, if you have put me in a hot seat today, Shivani, and I'm the accused here, so I, I need a little bit of margin at least to for the people to listen. It's a, it's, it's a basic courtesy that I deserve. Uh, what I say, whether it makes sense or not, let the wisdom of the uh, News 18 uh, viewer, let them decide about it. <laughs> now, uh, when you say whether people are accepting this or not, I think you should just go on Twitter and see what the BBC has said, what the Washington Post has said, You're... what the finance... You're again, you're stopping me. Again, you are stopping me. Again, you are stopping me. But you're, you're, you're sidestepping my you question. Not, Shivani, you are not giving the wisdom of the viewers of the News 18 enough leeway. If I'm not talking sense, let them decide. No, no, why you have you, to answer my question. I'm asking Did, about the public. You're talking about media houses. I'm coming to that. Didn't okay, I answer come to the public. You? Didn't I answer it to you in the very first sentence when I said that 95% of the people of Delhi when 25 lakh people were surveyed, they have overwhelmingly said that I think the viewers of TV and News 18 are intelligent enough so where are these, person where are these not people? to repeat his statement. My question is this, you know, so that there's no need to get needlessly agitated. Just Sir, relax for I'm a second. I'm not agitated. I'm, I'm not trying agitated. to get a perspective from your party about what is going on in Indian politics. You know, you've had Sanjay Singh's arrest, Manish Sisodia's arrest, Satendra Jain's arrest. You've had Arvind Kejriwal's arrest. Now, I'm not even going into K. Kavita's arrest because it's a different polity down there. But in Delhi, your government is hugely popular. You've won multiple mandates. But the public is not out on the streets or there is no, you know, overt sentiment that something uh, truly ghastly has taken place. Is that because he's not popular? I'm not suggesting that. Is, but are is it because the public is not buying the narrative that you are being wronged, that there is nothing to proceed against you? So is uh, CA, uh, News 18 anchor Shivani Gupta instigating the people to leave their work and come to the streets and uh, make a chaos? I don't Didn't think you call for a nationwide protest? What does that mean? Isn't it happening? Isn't an is it happening? protest happening? Isn't it happening? Where if is it happening? Covering it, if you are not covering it, just go to the PTI website and see from Kerala to Kashmir in your own show right now, the, uh, the leader from Kashmir to Kerala are speaking about a uh, death of democracy. Yeah, so they are speaking of course street. and I am representing that protesting. precisely. People thank you for Thank you for giving me that vote that I am representing exactly what the opposition leaders are saying. There is a difference between opposition leaders saying and making statements versus a genuine public sentiment. That's the point I am making. Alright, I, I, I have to move ahead. I have to move ahead. I want to go across to Arshpreet before I bring in the BJP as well. Arshpreet, you know the other big question on the minds of the public today is that how do you reconcile with the Congress's position on liquor gate scam? Some of your leaders have come out in public, done press conferences, called for Arvind Kejriwal's arrest in the past. 
and actually have claimed that they were the ones who blew the whistle on this scam. Today, you are standing with Arvind Kejriwal in precisely this case. Is that not a confusing stand? I'll answer your question, Shivani. Please allow me a minute and a half uninterrupted. Less and less days to go for the elections. More and more arrests and freezing of the accounts is going to be witnessed by the enforcement of dictatorship, by the IT, by the CBI, basically by the Bharatiya Janata Party. First, uh, the leader of India Bloc, Mr. Himant Sorain, was arrested. One chief minister. Second chief minister of the uh, of a and a leader of India Bloc was arrested, Mr. Kejriwal. Then the country's principal opposition party, Congress's accounts were frozen. All of this happens just before the Lok Sabha elections are to arrive. Now, the, here the main concern is, the most important point is, that the matter that pertains to Mr. Kejriwal of Delhi liquor policies of 2021, why was he not arrested in 2022? Why was he not arrested in 2023? As far as Mr. Swarain is concerned, he could have been arrested a long time ago. Why was he not? Uh, the uh, matter that pertains to Congress party, the freezing of the accounts pertains to 2018-19, 2020, 2021, 2022, 2023. Just before Lok Sabha election, you had to freeze our accounts. So this goes on to suggest that the Bharatiya Janata Party is up for political vendetta. That the Bharatiya Janata Party is scared that the Bharatiya Janata Party is anxious that they are going to be ousted, therefore they are attacking okay. the India. Okay, now please answer Shavali. my question. Number three. number three, one last point, please, Shivani. So, number three is that the Bharatiya Janata Party has a history of misusing these agencies. Fact number one is that 95% of the opposition, 95% cases registered by the ED and the CBI are allegedly against the opposition parties. Second, that uh, when the electoral bonds data came out, we saw 84 companies that were raided by these agencies. A uh, Some time after that, subsequent to that, gave a lot of donations to the Bharatiya Janata Party. 84 companies. Now, where did the ITD CBI action go there? Okay. Why did you not? Ashpreet, I've Bhatti got to come in now. Answer my question. You yes. call Kejriwal corrupt. You call this policy corrupt. You asked for his arrest. Now you're quibbling over timing? Now, answering your question, Shivani. The fact here is that if Mr. Kejriwal or Mr. Sareen or any other opposition party leader had done something wrong, let's say in 2021, in 2017, in 1993, the action should have followed then and there, not just before the Lok Sabha election. It is the timing that gives it all away. It is the is, timing that... You called him guilty in the, in the past. Is he guilty or not of corruption? It's, well, that's for the courts. Or guilt, the or the guilt uh, only lasts, let's say, till six months before an election. Last, six months, time, six months in the run-up to an election, you are not guilty answer, anymore. Answering your question, now I do not uh, know if the Bhatia Janata Party believes that or not, but it's for the judge and it's for the court to decide, sure. not for the party to decide. But the Bhatia Janata Party, of course, has a different way of operating. They say we are the judge, you and executioner, and then what they, do you believe? What is the Congress the Party's judgment. principal stand on liquor gate yes. scam? Because your leaders Mar have been on my show claiming yes. credit uh -huh. for blowing uh -huh. the whistle of this quote unquote scam. Bilkul. Two things to that. First yes, very is, quickly. We, we, we believe that it is for the honorable courts to decide. They are very competent. We have full faith in them. It is for the court to decide. It is innocent until pro proven guilty, however. Number two, if the Bharati Janata Party and you, Shivani, are giving so much regard and respect to our statements, I have also said... I am asking for where, what is your stand today? Uh, that's what I am saying. Nah, it's, the, it's for the court to decide. Second, one last time, <laughs> Shivani. Yes, one what last thing is, yeah. So, if since uh, the BJP and you have given us so much regard to our statements, hmm. we have also said that there should be an inquiry instituted uh, against the electoral bond. Yes, I debated that just party. yesterday. Thank and, you very and much. One more thing on top Thank, of that. No, no, one last line. One last line is that Ashpreet, your time is up. Sorry, time is up. I, I want to go across to Harish Khurana. Harish Khurana, you know, a lot of people feel that it's not just about you know, plain and simple legalities when it comes to these cases. You know, as well as anybody else, politics is also about perception. And the way these agencies are acting right now, you're leaving nothing to anybody's imagination about what the end goal here is. Why should the opposition not read into the pattern where you go slow in some cases for as long as it suits you, or you go slow in a case when a leader joins you, and then suddenly four weeks in, uh, you know, ahead of a general election, you've arrested a sitting chief minister. Shivani, 
वी शुड अंडरस्टैंड नाइन समंथ हैव बीन इशूड टू अरविंद केजरीवाल सिंस लास्ट अक्टूबर दैट टाइम वी आर वी आर टेन मंथ्स अवे फ्रॉम फ्रॉम इलेक्शन लोकसभा इलेक्शन the allegation which has been made by opposition that because the elections are come and we have got arrested the uh, arvin kejriwal so that that, that uh, has gone flat point is you got no relief from any of the courts since last 3 4 days court you said ki we will be joining arvin kejriwal said we will be joining uh, the probe only if you get the protection you never get the protection from there ED took a took a action. Now you are claiming you are you are cribbling like he when the politics is going on since last fourteen months in the same case where you are be now accused and a mastermind now uh, mastermind now fourteen months Manish Sisodia is not getting a bail. He only sixty five odd crore. That's because it's PMLA. Don't... It's all nearly impossible no, for a court I'll to give you that. bail. Let me complete. Let me complete. Complete. Shmi, I'll give you the answer of that okay. also. Okay. I'll give the answer of that also. Since last fourteen months, he is in jail. Sanjay Singh is in jail since last six months. Vijay Nair is in jail since last few months. Point is, when you say this, that when data politics is going on, you are disrespecting the honourable courts because on the order of the courts, hmm. these people are not getting the bail. Now coming to your point, because this is MLA, I'll give you three examples. Sanjay Rao, who was arrested in PMLA and got the got the relief uh, from the honourable court. Karthik Chidambaram, P Chidambaram. These are the cases where you got the got the may got the relief, hmm. but In this case, because prima facie Supreme Court has clearly said there are thirty-eight crore rupees money trail has been found. So, and also in Sanjay Singh case, I read, I read one line only that the prima facie there is evidence against uh, the, uh, the the accused, which is Sanjay okay. Singh. No, my point is no no i asked you about perception see the legal battle will be fought in courts and i know that in this case uh, you could blame the bjp today but this is a law or the provision that predates their government from 2014 where it's the onus of proving your innocence is on the accused these are very stringent uh, legal provisions it is what it is as it stands and as i said the courts will decide but harish karana i asked you about perception there is also a big section which is already openly murmuring whether this will backfire on you so no. close to elections no. in delhi you are arresting a popular chief minister who's won three different mandates recently the aam aadmi party won a mandate or in the at the mcd level you know dethroning the bjp Shivani, why should nobody see this as some sort of political vendetta Shivani, i think my people in delhi hmm. or a country are intelligent enough and seeing all this what is happening i mean you evade nine summons i mean your for you vipassana is more important honoring a law is not important i mean you for for you elections in madhya pradesh are important for you diwali is more important but coming in front of ed and answering those, those questions are not important so you, you don't are think that there could be a a, a backfiring effect not at all galvanizing fact, of the public in opinion fact, in in fact, in support of india block no way in fact in fact they were the people who work against dead or against corruption i mean congress they were they were pani pp ke gali nikalte the ye log congress ko people have seen aam aadmi party and uh, arvind kej aam aadmi party in congress and this is the one you know you're saying a perception this is a letter written by uh, congress chief uh, delhi chief uh, alleging the scam yes. you know the letter written on on 2nd june now on what face will you go to in front of public and say wo letter jhoota tha the allegation was wrong today because we have done close okay. hand that is right now uh, no i asked that question that question would be in public's mind but it is for the congress to answer i want to very quickly bring in ap singh ap singh i have a couple of questions for you from what yeah, i have sure. heard transpire in the hearing today two questions come to mind one is that a lot of approver statements or call rec- uh, cedia da- data is being cited as proof but shouldn't the shouldn't an agency have more than approver statements to you know book someone or regard someone as guilty as in the case of arvind kejriwal uh, definitely definitely there, there has to be more material and it uh, you cannot have a conviction only on the basis of an approver statement hmm. but because the courts are not accepting uh, see first of all there has been a liquor scam i think everybody has accepted that hmm that there was a liquor scam now the question is who all are involved in that liquor scam and how far did it go does it go up to the chief minister or was it was it uh, uh, something done uh, 
below him, you know, among his ministers or among his officials. But there has been a liquor scam and they have enough evidence, it seems, because you see all the uh, petitions given in the court, the way the ED is uh, arguing the case. There is definitely material. Now, uh, the question is whether the chief minister himself is involved or not. And that is for the court to decide. Yeah, I asked you that yeah. question because in, in uh, presenting Arvind Kejriwal's direct individual role, they have mentioned a lot of approval statements who have corroborated that yes, Arvind Kejriwal asked them for 100 crore kickbacks that went to eventually to the Aam Aadmi Party's coffers uh, in uh, lieu of tweaking the liquor policy. So would they need more than that or not? The other yes, question, definitely. the other question is that is it wrong to for him to be treated as guilty as the ED has almost you know, said today that he, we are considering him guilty both individually and vicariously because of his position as the head controlling the functioning of the Aam Aadmi Party. Is it fair for an agency to do so without or before actually properly investigating him, interrogating him? They haven't really done that. No, so, so just now it's an arrest. I mean, it's, it's not a conviction. It's, hmm. it's just an arrest. And the arrest is because if you don't cooperate with an agency, if you're non-cooperating, if you're not appearing, then the agency has a right to, to take you under custody and then to, to examine you and then to interrogate you. And it's quite possible that they may want to, uh, uh, you know, make him face some of those approvals Accused, yes. and cross-examine them and get, a, get the truth out. So you do need to do that. And uh, for that reason, it's quite and also, uh, he's obviously not been cooperating with the with the agency. Yes, yes. Because he's, I don't think he did himself any favors by not attending yeah, any of the summons. Absolutely, he should have. Uh, plus, he should have what else? He uh, has been alleged. Yeah. Absolutely. Exactly. You absolutely. know that brings me to uh, Siddharth once again. I've got limited time. I'll give all three of you a minute each. Siddharth, this is why possibly there is lack of sympathy for Arvind Kejriwal. He followed the Heman Suren model, and look where it has brought him. Uh, if you evade nine summons, why should the public believe that you got enough chance or uh, were not treated fairly? In fact, he got possibly treatment even more longer rope than an ordinary citizen would. <clears throat> then by that logic, uh, Shivani, if the enforcement directorate is called as a constitutional authority which has to be respected, then the Constitution of India 405 page document doesn't have single word called enforcement directorate. But the Delhi CM, the, the term Delhi CM comes many times. So isn't it also the Delhi uh, enforcement directorate's responsibility to treat a constitutional authority as per constitution? The example here, the um, example here is that uh, the then Gujarat chief minister was denied a visa to the US. But the same person, when he became the Prime Minister of India, US extended all the protocols. So constitutionalism goes both ways. You cannot say that ED is a constitutional authority, but the Delhi Chief Minister is not. It's okay. the other way around. It's the other way around. No, I'm the not ED questioning is... ED's authority or the court's authority. I'm actually, again, purely again. asking you about perception about how this case has, yeah. has gone forward. Uh, yeah, Ashpreet, Ashpreet, very quickly, 30 seconds to you as well. Is public sympathy really with the opposition leaders who are crying foul about Indian democracy? 100%, not just uh, the public sympathy, the sentiment, the world is feeling that the Bharatiya Janata Party is turning autocratic. And the Bharatiya Janata Party is trying to do away with the opposition all at once by initiating raids, actions, arrests and whatnot. My one question of the Bharatiya Janata Party is Shivani and I'd expect an answer. Out of the blue, the Bharatiya Janata Party decides, the union decides to challenge Pankaj Bansal versus Union of India judgment, which is a judgment of the Honorable Supreme Court, out of all days today. And uh, this judgment basically says that the ED has to furnish the reasons for arrest uh, in writing. My question to the Bharatiya Janata Party is, why out of all days today you have to do this? Okay, and number okay. Two, let him, let number me take two, it has been dismissed. It has been dismissed by the Honorable Supreme Court. No, so that so just Bhattis shows Bhattis. that there is actually courts to strike that no. balance. One and thing, these no, no, cases thing. have been in court and they haven't one found thing, any relief. Thing. No, no, one I've run thing. out of time. Unfortunately, I've run thing. out of time. I do thank all of our guests for joining us. Coming up after a very short break, a special conversation with cricket insiders, some of the world's top names from A.B. De Villiers to Brett Lee and more. On the world's biggest cricketing league, that begins later this evening. Of course, we're discussing the IPL and its impact.
Who powered by? The prosecution, which is representing the enforcement directorate, is confident that they have enough on record to convince the court. And since they have managed to convince the court in the case of Manish Sisodia and Sanjay Singh, uh, they feel it will be the same for them as far as the Delhi Chief Minister is concerned. That's what the enforcement directorate believes. They do feel that they have a watertight case. There are several uh, statements that have come to the fore, part of which have been uh, part of the chart sheet. Uh, in the past, filed by the enforcement directorate, K. Kavita's uh, remand note also does make a mention, Arunima, as far as Arvind K. Jriwal's role goes. Yes, and that was the first time that enforcement directorate actually in a press release mentioned the role of Arvind K. Jriwal so clearly about a conspirator. Till then, there was confusion whether Kejriwal was being summoned as a witness or an accused because Section 50 of the PMLA actually gives the IO the discretion of deciding the status of the person after the questioning and therefore Kejriwal was repeatedly asking. But uh, once K. Kavita's arrest happened and ED released that press statement, that was the first hint that ED is confident of a case against Arvind Kejriwal. It is moving uh, to, to questioning him as an accused and then subsequently last night we saw what happened. Delhi High Court refused to give any interim relief. ED did not waste any time. They landed at Kejriwal's residence with a search warrant and soon enough they arrested him. Uh, so ED is clearly saying that Kejriwal knew about this alleged conspiracy even though his, he, you know, interestingly he is not, not signed on any papers. Uh, so that is what his defense is claiming that what are you accusing me of? I have not signed on any paper. You have not found any money in my account. You have not found any money in my, uh, you know, pers in my premises. So where is the, the money laundering or where is the crime that I have committed? But like uh, I pointed out, ED's case is that the money was actually utilized to fund elections for the Ahmadi party, specifically in Goa. I think in minutes from now, the concerned judge will walk in, special judge for CBI and ED will just walk into the courtroom and the proceedings will begin and then we'll know uh, the details of that remand application. Right, and that is the situation as we see, ladies and gentlemen, those visuals on your screen, Arvind Kejriwal at the Rouse Avenue court after the dramatic scenes yesterday outside his residence where the enforcement directorate arrested the Delhi chief minister. Now, this has shaken up the politics, ladies and gentlemen, on the road to the Lok Sabha elections with several allies of the India Alliance rallying around Arvind Kejriwal calling this a complete witch hunt. I'm also joined by my colleague Yash Goyal, who's reporting from outside the Ahmadmi Party office, where the entire cadre of the party has rallied around the chief minister, saying that this is a complete witch hunt on the road to the Lok Sabha election, saying these are trumped-up charges against Delhi chief minister because the BJP is spooked by the rise of the Ahmadmi Party. Yash, what are the scenes outside the Ahmadmi Party office as the Ahmadmi Party cadre continue the offensive against the central government? Well, Ayushman, as of now, uh, uh, near our office, uh, the situation is relatively better as of now because now all eyes are on the courtroom because uh, as of now, uh, there was no relief which was granted to the AAP national convener Arvind Kejriwal by any of the codes and today, uh, uh, now as per part of the ED's procedure, now he's, he, 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 he is in front of the Rouse Avenue court and in some time from now, we are understanding the judge will arrive and in fact, then the proceedings will begin in regards to this very matter. Uh, as of now, things here at the uh, Aam Aadmi Party office are, uh, I can say that a sense of unease calm prevails because everyone's eyes are on the courtroom because what happens, what transpires um, in this very hearing, because this is a crucial one, this will decide the further course of action in this entire case. Um, whether and how long the ED will be able to get the custody or there will be something else which will be coming to the table. As of now, uh, this is the Deen Dhyal Upadhyay Mark where I'm coming to you from. The commotion panned out over here early in the morning. In fact, yesterday late night, a call for protest was uh, given by the Aam Aadmi Party senior leader. In fact, uh, on that call, a lot of leaders actually gathered over here. And in fact, uh, one thing which I have to tell you that uh, um, speak to any one of the Aam Aadmi Party senior leader and this time around, they say that you can arrest Arvind Kejriwal, but you cannot arrest the idea uh, uh, which he follows and which he propagates uh, in his... have a big round of applause for our four panelists here. You know them as well as anybody else. And I'm very privileged that I don't have to do any introductions because everybody knows you. 
all in India very, very well. So all I'll say is, welcome to India, A.V., Brett, and of course, Akash and Anjum are our pride here. Let me begin with A.V. The IPL is two days to go. You've experienced it and how for 11 years as a player. But this time around, you're going to be commentating on the IPL. But begin by telling me, in the world, is it truly the centerpiece of cricket as we think it is in India? Good afternoon, everyone. It's great to be here, and thanks for the introduction. Um, it certainly is. Um, it's grown from strength to strength over the years. Um, it's, it's most definitely, it's not only the biggest cricket league in the world, I think it's one of the biggest sports leagues in the world, um, which is quite something uh, to have been achieved over not a long period of time. Um, we, we, we've seen it really explode over the last few years. Um, the performances the players put in really make them household names. And, and some of the foreigners coming over here get to understand a bit more about the Indian culture and, um, and also become household names over here. So it, it's truly remarkable. It's a great opportunity for all players, and, and not only players, but administrators and everyone to get involved. And I think uh, the fans of cricket have really enjoyed it over the years. Let me ask you, uh, at the very top, is it harder to be Mr. 360 or is it going to be harder to be a commentator and please the fans inside the commentating box? <laughs> well, over there, Genius Geo Cinema, we've got a fantastic team, so I really feel at home. Um, it, it's, it's not an individual sport, which, which helps a lot. Um, it's nice to have teammates around you, and we have a lot of fun, and that's also part of our strength over there. Um, we are still cricket players. Uh, I still feel like I just played the other day, so that's the way we <laughs> commentate as well. We, we really give the fans and the audience a bit of an insight of what it feels like to go through those moments, the pressure moments, what it feels like in the change room, what it feels like to lose and also to win. And I think that's, that's what makes it really special. But are special. you nervous about be commentating more than when you were, when you were going out to pad up? I, I, I don't think so, to be honest. It's a lot less pressure. You just sit there and um, you watch the players make the mistakes instead of yourself. <laughs> um, no, I, it, was, it was very nerve-wracking to walk out there to bat. Luckily, when I had my bat in hand, I started relaxing a bit, but the build-up was always really terrifying. Do one thing, take your bat in the commentary box as well. <laughs> I should, sitting next to Brett Lee. Yes, Brett, I was going to come to you. Um, how has that journey been for you? Uh, what are the adjustments you had to make as a player to a commentator? Well, firstly, uh, namaste, it's great to be back in my, uh, <laughs> my second country. The adjustments, look, it's, it's obviously different going from being a player than going up in the commentary box and, and working on the game. But the thing is, we're very lucky that we all have played you know, the game and now get to talk about the game, which, you know, which we love. So it's so um, humbling as a former player to get out there and, as AB said, to, to watch other players and see what they do, the mistakes that they make and, and how they can fix the game. But for us, it's, it's, it's a lot of fun, you know, where sitting with mates that we've played against, mates that we've played with. Mm. And it's still like you actually get the feeling like you're still there playing, but we're not warming up and we're not doing the stretches. If he's Mr. 360, which he is, I, I think I might call myself Mr. 160. <laughs> not with my batting, of course. Absolutely. But tell me, uh, what is it about the IPL that clicks so well? Uh, and what is the impact that you have seen both as a player and now, you know, from outside the boundary line that this... Uh, this league has made in world cricket? Look, I think what the Indian Premier League has done, it's actually brought uh, a lot of different cultures a lot closer together. Mm. And my first, you know, couple of years, my first three years, I think I was playing for Kings Eleven, the Punjab Kings back then. Uh, and, and seeing how different guys prepare, like you've got guys from South Africa, obviously players from India, uh, from all over the world, and just the different preparations that they go through. And I think it's brought the cricket nation is a lot closer together. It doesn't mean that we don't, when you get the chance to play against them on a national scale, you know, that um, camaraderie is still there, that passion, that aggression is still there, but it just transcends and actually finds a way to, um, to take that angst out of the game. And that's what the Indian Premier League has done. It just gets better and better and better. I always joke around and say that the hardest part about playing in the Indian Premier League wasn't necessarily the training and the bowling, it was the after parties and trying to recover from that. So that, that was a lot of fun. It's changed though. Spoken like a true player. Uh, it's changed. I think a few cricketers have said so. 
<laughs> but Akash, speaking of the IPL and its success, uh, I do want to broaden this to the format itself. You know, we've had a lot of conversations and, and you know, Brett and AB can weigh in on this as well, along with Anjum. Uh, there's been a sense that the T20 format in itself is a bit threatening to other formats, particularly the classical format of Test Cricket. Uh, do you sense that there is a concern? I mean, the BCCI recently incentivized monetarily for players to play more Test Cricket. Uh, what does that tell you? And is there a concern? Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, and actually, these two guys, uh, for everybody's uh, consumption, their Aadhaar card is already made, and we are linking it with their bank <laughs> accounts as well. Uh, so that they're, they're as Indians as Indians can be. Uh, but uh, when you talk about the T20 cricket uh, threatening, I think uh, there is a possibility of everyone to coexist. Uh, this was the threat uh, way back in 2008 as well, when the tournament was first launched. Uh, I was uh, one of those skeptics that uh, it may actually eat into test cricket too much. Nobody would want to play test cricket and all of that uh, uh, because uh, I was still that old school and couldn't play like AB, of course. Uh, not many of us could. Uh, so, but, but it has still coexisted. Let's be fair, uh, on Geo Cinema and uh, Sports 18, we were uh, covering the test series that just got concluded. Uh, it was India versus England. Uh, absolute drop draw where uh, contests were, uh, uh, were very keenly contested. Uh, two quality teams going at each other. Uh, there is a lot of charm there. Uh, yes, it is uh, uh, under a bit of pressure, but pressure is good. Uh, all, all cricketers will tell you that uh, we need to thrive under pressure. If you buckle and you disappear, I mean, uh, bad luck. But uh, test cricket has survived 150 odd years. Mm. Uh, so there must have been a few other existential crises uh, uh, that uh, may have come up earlier, but uh, it, has, uh, it has survived. Uh, BCCI is doing its bit. Uh, it's not just, uh, uh, they've added actually 45 lakh rupees up to 45 lakh rupees mm. per game. At, in addition to the 15 lakh that you get, so it's about nearly what 80,000 US dollars mm -hmm. uh, for a game of cricket, uh, which is phenomenal. Uh, see, India will continue to do its bit. Uh, Australia is again very keen to play test cricket. Uh, South Africa is uh, facing their own uh, yes. set of challenges, and uh, we don't mean to look down upon anyone because uh, all of us are very different. Uh, we have our own challenges. Uh, but I do feel uh, when you talk about test cricket, uh, like we are doing at the IPL, and you will see it on Geo Cinema throughout, uh, uh, we celebrate uh, this festival of cricket for the next two years. Uh, but we equal, take, take test cricket equally seriously. And that's how we did for the last five weeks when England were here. And uh, uh, it, it will thrive uh, only if uh, the three big boys at this point in time, uh, India, England, and uh, uh, Australia, sorry, AB. Uh, they, they, they keep investing in it and they keep actually uh, funding the sh uh, T20 money should start funding test cricket. At some stage it will happen. It is already now visible in Indian cricket when you talk about those $80,000 per game. Uh, so that might just be the road ahead because uh, anybody who's played the game, uh, anybody worth its salt will tell you that test cricket is actually the uh, the, the pinnacle is. of uh, your skill set or skill set being challenged. Uh, so I'm, I'm sure it'll stay in maybe in a slightly different form and shape, but it'll be there. Anjum, uh, lots of responsibility on respective boards to do their bit. Um, because as we all accept, there is a bit of threat. Uh, and uh, we need to do a little bit more. Uh, do you sense that all boards will think, put their thinking caps on and you know, put their hands together? Yeah, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, if I didn't say it, then I would have been singled out. So I rather say good afternoon to everyone. So <laughs> I think, uh, look for, for the women cricketers, it's welcoming sign if we can continue to play test cricket. And since India has won, you know, the, the, the good part is that India beat Australia and mm -hmm. England at home. So the Philip of hosting more test matches has come about. We will be hosting South Africa in a very few, in a couple of months down, um, just after the IPL. So that's, ex that's important. But I do feel that test cricket cannot die. So it's like what Akash said, you know, when T20 came in, no one will play test cricket. But, you know, it's like a wheel, like this rising India wheel that we're always, we're all a part of at this point of time. Hmm. It will come around. And I think it's obviously the English cricket board, Australian, Indian, South African, New Zealand, all these cricket boards will need to do their bit. They will all come around. It's all about investing at the right time, at the right place. Brett, what would you tell modern day cricketer today when it comes to these dilemmas? Well, firstly, have fun. That's, that's the reason why we play cricket. And I'm with AB, you know, I, I sort of, I started playing cricket professionally 
96, 97, I think it was, a long, long time ago. <laughs> and, you know, the, cho the, the choice and options weren't there. And, and my dream was to play for Australia, to wear the baggy green cap. So we want to make sure that any kid, any young boy or girl that wants to get the chance to play test cricket can have that opportunity. I think across the board, though, what would have to happen in order to make it work is, is to make sure that the players get paid the same amount of money whichever country that they're playing for. And if we can do that and bring different um, nations up to speed that aren't getting paid as well as they would in a T20 format, whereas it's the IPL or you know what, whatever format it might be, that might encourage the young boys and girls then to go back to play, I guess, more cricket. So maybe, yeah, it's up to the boards to get more funding in order to look after their players coming through. I'll just add one small bit, mm. and uh, that's where I think broadcaster can and has played a role. Mm. Uh, of course, we've spoken about the players, uh, uh, how can they be incentivized, but uh, uh, this is what we actually did it. Uh, make it accessible to everyone to watch it for free. Uh, there, are, there are countries where uh, it is not on terrestrial TV and then you don't get to see it at all. If you don't see it, uh, you're not going to be encouraged to play it. Hmm. Uh, so the last uh, test series, I keep referring uh, to that uh, event, India, England, uh, wonderful test series, but it was also available on everyone's mobile, go wherever Absolutely. you watch. Uh, bring people into the stadium, don't charge them a, a, a penny, just bring them in. Uh, because if they play, if they watch their heroes play only in coloured clothings for their franchise or for their respective countries, uh, that's what they want to be. And if you want them to play test cricket, expose them to test cricket and suddenly they'll fall in love with it. Yeah. Uh, so that's something that uh, responsibility also lies with us uh, from, from a broadcaster point of view, that make it entertaining, make it innovative and, and, uh, and make it accessible because that's important. You know, uh, speaking of broadcasting, Akash, I don't think it would be unfair to say to anybody else that you are the most popular Hindi commentator in India and the world. What so Akash has, what Akash <laughs> has managed to do with his uh, YouTube channel plus your signature brand of Akash Vani is absolutely phenomenal. So kudos on that. But you know, you, unlike us in news, get very real-time feedback. What is the biggest feedback you've received when you do this and interact with audiences? What has been the learning, the biggest learning? Uh, well, firstly, thank you so much. Uh, she's been too kind. Uh, See, feedback mechanism is, is a fantastic thing. Where do you get it from? And uh, uh, that's what I think digitalization has actually uh, been a game changer. Uh, if you were always been on linear TV, for example, if you're on linear medium, how would you know what works, what doesn't? Mm. Uh, it is just between a, a group of people deciding, oh, this is nice, and that is perhaps not nice. Mm. Uh, but when you are on a digital medium, uh, I think feedback is almost instant. Uh, you get to know uh, if, if people are tuning in, going out, uh, when they actually tend to yes. drop. Uh, and, and now you obviously are deeply ingrained uh, uh, in the digital space as well. So, so matrix have changed quite a bit. And I also feel actually uh, that uh, digital medium is empowering people. Uh, previously, you didn't have a choice. Now, when you consume any sort of content on digital medium, you have the choice. You're not sitting in a group of people and watching something on linear TV with uh, a remote control uh, being with somebody else. Mm. Uh, you're not forced to do anything. If it's on your mobile phone, uh, you decide what you want to watch. And if uh, the person who is watching is empowered, then it's our duty to engage him and engage him, him or her uh, for a significant period of time. Because if you are failing to do so, uh, then there is, there is no hope and that's where uh, now when we talk about the IPL and, and what we did at Geo Cinema, it can only happen uh, in a digital space uh, where you got 17 feed with 12 languages and, and only at a click, only at a click that you decide. You know Anjum, one of the biggest innovations was different languages. I mean India is a country of you know, tens of languages that people speak and uh, the experiences that people have had with so many different languages, commentary now available online is a huge revolution. What I mean, what is the difference you noticed uh, in the way the audiences were pulled in because of language alone? A taxi driver was watching uh, IPL on Geo Cinema in Bhojpuri language. Yes. So I had to ask him what is the score because he was consuming that content and he says it's brilliant. Then one, one fine day I was like, uh, do you only watch cricket in Bhojpuri language? He says, no friends of mine and actually watch it in Punjabi language also. So there I was in a more comfortable space because I do understand Punjabi. <laughs> but it's the fact like what uh, the gentlemen have just mentioned about consumption of content, if it's available in a very much relatable language, which is 
which is the first language for many people, where, be it Bhojpuri, be it Bengali or any other language. It's, if it's more relatable and it's also said in a very uh, funny way as well, mm. because it's, it's, at the end of the day, it's entertainment. It's not a, con it's not a product which you consume with a lot of seriousness. Cr seriousness is for the cricketers because we play, mm. but not for the audience. So I think the, the way that Geo Cinema has brought about different languages and made it more accessible, as Akash mentioned, and you know, the entertainment value, that's why we see the product so successful. Who here would have thought that you would have commentary in Bhojpuri one day for cricket? Raise your hands. Did anyone see this coming? No. In Punjabi? No. Right? That's the difference that has happened today, isn't it? Uh, Akash, I mean, it's been a revolution. Well, there, there is Haryanvi this year. Uh, <laughs> because people were asking for it. That, you know, this is far more entertaining. What are the requests that are coming in? Oh, lots actually, I'll tell you. So, there's, there's our uh, Punjabi commentator goes by the name of Sunil Taneja. He's yes. very popular. Uh, people in Pakistan, and I met them, they said, we are watching him via VPN. I was mm. like, wow, okay. Uh, because it is so Punjabi popular. spoken very yeah, popularly it is spoken very Pakistan. well. Yeah, it's, it's spoken there. So, uh, see, I'll tell you, sport is, is a very strange kind of content piece that you can consume on mute. Uh, let's be yeah. fair, if it's there, uh, you don't even have to switch on the audio to know what is happening. Hmm. Uh, the audio is based only on, on your preference. If it is entertaining enough, I want to listen to it. I've got a, a teammate, uh, he comes from Khurja. Uh, so I asked him, what's your name in your town? What do you listen to in the commentary? He said, I'm listening to the mute. हम तो क्रिकेट ही म्यूट पे देखते हैं। We don't watch it with commentary because it's English. They don't understand it. Yeah. See, there is this no disrespect, but if it is the language that I don't relate to, I don't understand. I might as well watch on on mute. But the moment I give you the language preference, the language that you speak in, the world opens up. It's far more entertaining and engaging in the end. Yeah, and you know, AB, it's not just about languages. It's also about capturing audiences that maybe were. I wouldn't say neglected, but uh, felt neglected. I mean, you have a YouTube, uh, you know, a, a, a YouTube show of your own, and uh, you were seen on a show with Mrs. De Villiers one day. So it's also about getting people involved, people generally that you wouldn't have spoken cricket with, isn't it? Yeah, with a YouTube show, I learned from the best over there. <laughs> Um, it's, it's not so easy, but I do enjoy it. It's nice to stay in touch with the cricket audience, and that's the idea behind the YouTube show, is to, to keep sharing what's on my mind about the cricketing world and some other stuff as well. Um, but yes, once again, uh, with our Geo Cinema feed, we have the Hangout feed, which is quite, quite different. And um, I was uh, on that show with my wife, and um, I also got educated in that show, to be honest. <laughs> she told me that, no, this one time when KKR played RCB, and I'm obviously an RCB player, she actually supported KKR, and I was like, excuse me, what's that all about? She said, no, Shah Rukh Khan is one of my favorite guys. <laughs> I said, so I also learned some stuff on there, but I think the audience really relate to that. It's something different. It's something about my personal life and everyone's personal lives, and, and, and we get some of the players on there as well. I think Virat's been on a few of the younger guys, get on the show, and we just talk about different things, not only cricket. And, um, Yes, there are die-hard cricketing fans out there, but there are also fans that want to know a bit more and not just cricketing stuff. So I think from that point of view, I think Geo Cinema has done incredibly well. Uh, there's also Brett 4K, there are hero cams, uh, there's so much technological innovation that is going on. Uh, does that boggle your mind sometimes to and see so and many different And that's just feeds? up in the commentary box. <laughs> on, on, the, on the field, it's good as well. Now, nah, look, it's... Um, yeah, it's, it's to see cricket in a different light where it's so close and so realistic now and the, you know, the camera angles and, and, and the clarity that you can watch with now is, is fantastic. You know, you mentioned, what, 17 different languages. I reckon there's 18. There's Hinglish as well. We should put Hinglish in there as the 18th. Which and we Brett will do well in that. Brett can speak uh, tora, a bit tora, of Hindi. Tora, tora, Hindi. Brett, tora, tora. Brett, teaching him to be on Hindi feed this year. Hindi, Punjabi, we'll have a crack at everything, right? <laughs> Sashri Kalji up the back there. <laughs> um, now, nah, look, it, it's, it's so exciting. We are, we are on the, you know, the eve of the Indian Premier League starting. Great to be part of uh, Geo Cinema. It's a lot of fun. We want to bring a different product. People are enjoying it. And um, life is pretty good. Yeah. Uh, speaking of the IPL, I should mention, Anjum, the WPL just finished. Uh, you know, this project has been a revelation of sorts. Of course, we knew the IPL was already successful, but there was a little trepidation with the WPL launching a couple of years ago. Um, are you surprised at all with how well-loved this product has already become? Uh, 
Day one, I was surprised. Uh, I think at the launch of the, uh, of the WPL, which was in Mumbai last year, and uh, the stadium was full in, uh, in Navi, Mumbai. And I remember talking to uh, Zach Zahir, and he was like, uh, wow, this is brilliant. I said, now, Zahir, can we sustain it? Mm. Uh, because, of course, Geo Cinema is showcasing it. It's going in digital. It's going on, it's going on different languages on digital as well. He says, look, how the cricket is played on the park will determine the success of it. Of course, uh, rest is history. Cricket was entertaining. And I was surprised looking at the numbers even after season one and now after season two. Mm that some of the best cricket played at the global level, we have surpassed those numbers, mm. which means the content is consumed by more than 10 million people. I'm, I'm not comparing it to any of the World Cups right now, but then if our Indian product can deliver a hit like this, then I think we've done really well. And, and that's exactly what we wanted. We wanted the WPL to succeed. We wanted cricket to be showcased, brought to them as easily accessible as it was and is and women's cricket to be right in front of them. So I think it's a, for me it's perfect because WPL just supersedes or precedes IPL and if Bangalore team wins it, it's, it's entertaining yeah. like this. <laughs> no, <laughs> you know, I, why not? <laughs> I was going to come to AB, AB the girls have finally done it. When are the boys, when are the boys going to do it? I, I think it's destiny. It's honestly like, I mean, the girls did it now and in a relationship, the guy's got to come to the party now. It's just how it is. <laughs> uh, I, I do think uh, the shackles are broken. I think this is the year. Uh, it's, it's meant to be for the guys. I don't, so, I don't mean to pull your leg, but every season we say this is going to be RCB season. You've heard it before, right? <laughs> yeah, we've heard it before. Maybe the change of name, though. The, you know, the change Bengaluru. Of name, They've become the Bengaluru. The change of colors on the, you know, the shirt color. Maybe this is the year. You, but just to come back to the WPL quickly, um, what I really enjoyed is we know the final was in Delhi. Yes. And we saw the footage of the, Bengal, the streets of Bengaluru going absolutely crazy. Fans mm. filling the streets. And it just shows you how far yeah. the WPL has come. You At know? the toss, you couldn't hear anything what the captain was coming back to you with. So it was that kind of fan following. And, and for us also, for all, all the broadcasters, you know, for us also it was an eye-opening because those RCB fans are everywhere. And it's such a nice thing to see the stadium being full. No, I feel for the RCB fans and I think it's good to have them this win. Uh, but do you really genuinely feel, AB, this could be RCB's year? I know you will be a little bit biased, but uh, uh, you know, who looks like a good title contender? I, I really do believe we can win it. Um, we will win it this year. Um, look, you've got to be patient. Sport is a funny thing. Um, cricket is, uh, is not predictable, otherwise it would have been boring. Um, so maybe once the shackles are broken, and I think really think the women, sometimes things just happen in a weird way. I think the women have broken the shackles, and once the RCB men's team get one win, I think there's going to be quite a few um, back to back. So <laughs> yeah, hopefully, hopefully we go from strength to strength this season. Brett, do you agree? I was actually going through the list of um, teams, the, the 10 franchises, and, and, and I, not because he's sitting next to me, but I, I actually think... RCB have got a very good chance this year. Yeah, I, I would not back against them. Akash, what is the Akash Tippani and the Akash Vani on this, this season's title contenders? See, I think firstly Smriti will go to the men's dressing room and, and give them a pep talk. <laughs> that's what, that's should, what should happen. Uh, they gave her a beautiful uh, guard of honor yesterday I was yes. seeing and it was beautiful. Uh, on a serious note, I do feel, uh, see, uh, all, all teams are fairly good and I agree with AB. It, there's just a lot more to it. Uh, then having a good team uh, which results in uh, lifting the trophy. Uh, when, I, when I just put all th teams together, Mumbai Indians are standing out. Uh, they are a very good team. So I, I'd say it could just be the Mumbai is here once again. Anjum, for you? And also keep Delhi in the mix as well. They we do keep Delhi strong, in the yeah. mix Delhi every in year. in the mix. They're, they're just around and RCB can jump from there as well. So don't put more pressure on AB, he's not playing. He doesn't have to hit those <laughs> shots around the, around the ground. But I'm sure as long as IPL is entertaining and we can see all that entertainment in different languages on mm -hmm. Geo Cinema, why not? AB, will you go to the dressing room maybe? Catch up with the old guys and uh, I don't know, talk to them? Listen, you're asking me a lot of questions <laughs> now. Eh? She's putting me under big pressure. <laughs> Um, I, I would love to. I, I have been in touch with some of the players. Um, they have a new coach in Andy Flower. Some things have changed over there. So it's maybe a bit of a fresh start for them. Mm. Um, so I've decided just to, to sit back and wait. If I hear from someone, I would very, I will very much be open to, to have a conversation with the guys and mm. give them whatever knowledge I have. Um, but I do feel there's so many world-class players in that team for this season. They're going to be just fine.
Final 15 seconds, Akash. Okay. The IPL season starting in two mm. days. If you were to set it up for the audiences in Hindi, how would you do it? And we'll, we'll end with that. बहुत सारे रिकॉर्ड्स बनेंगे बहुत सारे टूटेंगे बहुत सारा भयेगा पसीना और होगा बहुत सारा पेन पर यही तो सिखाया था ना कि नो पेन नो गेन सत्रह का खतरा इस बार होने वाला है बिकॉज दिस इज सीजन नंबर सेवनटीन और मंच तैयार है अब देखना ये होगा कि सरपंच कौन बनेगा पांच बार जीता है चेन्नई पांच बार जीता है मुंबई विल वी हैव अ न्यू विनर इन बैंगलोर वी शैल फाइंड आउट ऑल राइट ऑन दैट नोट बिग राउंड ऑफ अपलॉज फॉर आर क्रिकेटर्स ऑन द पैनल थैंक यू सो मच ABG Brackley Akash and Anjum thanks a lot Hello everyone welcome you're watching the hard facts I'm Akanksha Swaroop now Delhi's chief minister Arvind Kejriwal was arrested late on Thursday on charges of corruption in relation to the now scrap excise policy The move came after Kejriwal skipped multiple summons nine to be precise by the investigation agency earlier during the day today the Aam Aadmi Party also decided to fight it out from the streets all the way to the court protesting against the arrest of the chief minister security was also stepped up around the city with heavy personal deployment and multi layer barricading on roads leading to the BJP headquarters in fact Aam Aadmi Party ministers Atishi Saurabh Bharadwaj along with party workers were also detained amid these demonstrations and section 144 was imposed at ITO and around the Aam Aadmi Party office meanwhile the Delhi court has reserved its order on ED's plea